Yeah. We have been playing all these Madal B pieces. He's a great uh, court Ottoman court composer. He was Persian, and he wrote a lot of pieces with the Persian poetry in the Ottoman style. So we were practicing those. A lot of people have been working to kind of um, bring that work out and to different areas and talk about the medieval um, Persian music of the Ottoman culture. So we were with an Iranian friend of ours, um, Ali Sabadpour, wonderful tar player. We were practicing, just hanging out, you know, spend two or three hours, play through some scores. And it was kind of just, you know, jumbled around in my mind. I just went home and just sketched out something. So, oh, this is a new piece. <laughs> but it's that way when you, you start to learn a language and it starts to feel like you could say something with feeling and meaning. And so that was very lucky. I didn't notice it was a composition. You would notice that. I was like, what's this garbage, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, what? <laughs> I have questions. I'd, I'd like to ask to Evan, because you learned the uh, gamelan sound in your <coughs> violin. This is really new for me. Oh, I never you. hear this kind of... Uh, how, how, how do you learn this, actually? Uh, gamelan sound. Actually, I didn't really learn it from somebody, or... Yeah. I just listened to a lot of gamelan music, because Jessica's singing with gamelan. Yeah. So much, and I'm often there in the audience. Yeah. Um, I just that's tried true. playing. You've played with Kamalan a lot. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I, I played with Kamalan too. But um, at the same time, I like uh, pizzicato, yeah. my instrument. And uh, I have made up that melody like a long time ago. Yeah. Doom, doom, we played, but it sounds like Jessica can sing the Sindan with that. Yeah. That was one of our first mashups. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. said, Whoa, okay. It, oh, it sounds cool. But later, uh, when I w when we went to West Java, uh, I started trying kachapi. 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 Yeah, it's like oh, a yeah. like a heart. Sita, yeah, yeah. Latin. Sita, Sita, yeah. Sita, yeah. Yeah. Sita, yeah. yeah. So I, now I like that. So that made me come back to viola differently. Okay. And also I play some setar, like uh, Persian setar is what you have the, all this stuff like. These are uh, fat. So I grew my nail for that <laughs> sound. And, yeah, strange. I found out that you I can could spot a setar player anywhere. Yeah. They mm -hmm. have that long, just that one long nail. Yeah. So now I'm trying to kind of work with all, all those techniques and create some, some of my own. <laughs> yeah. But thanks. That's a very Thank fun. You. I love that. Yeah. We also heard some really great tarawangsa musicians in mm. West Java, in uh, the mountains. Sala? Sala? It was uh, mm. tara Tarawangsa. Tarawang. Have you ever seen that? It's like this two-stringed, almost like a rabab, but a square body and kind of a curb neck. Okay. Uh, and um, we met some people, what was it? Chi Chikondang. Chikondang. And Chikondang is the name of the village. Chikondang. And um, they played for us, and they even set out the uh, God and goddess rice, the fertility, um, yeah, yeah. it's like a little mask of a man and a woman, and then put that with the rice in front of it, because that's what they do, is they play for uh, fertility, rice harvest type of thing, and so they put that out and played, it's kind of a kachapi, but really small, called jentrang, yeah. and um, they, they played that, and... That's where I was playing like this, this kind of riff is kind of like jentrang. Dancing, but so <laughs> <laughs> this uh, and then she was singing the prayer, Kidung, yeah. at the same time. So, the materials are 
solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there any First improvis- hand experience? I'm sorry. Was there any improvisation tonight, or was this all written out? I'm, I was wondering. Yeah. Well, it depends what you mean by improvisation. Like totally free. I did a little passage in between mm-hmm. the first Javanese song that Jessica sang and that and that riff that I just played. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just try to improvise something mm-hmm. to transition yes. and hopefully change a key. So that was completely mm-hmm. off the top. Uh-huh. Uh, but Jessica's improvising all, all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, like you said, interlude, that's kind of improvisation in the Ottoman piece. It, and then also <coughs> the Sindanan is kind of like a form of singing, a uh, solo female singer for the gamelan. That's, you could say it's totally improvisational, but mm-hmm. the parameters are you have these certain poems called okay. Wangsalan, and you could choose from any of those that you like. Mm-hmm. You can have, you know, 20 that are your favorite, and then at any moment you can select those and then also the patterns um, are somewhat improvisational. So you should end on a certain pitch, okay. but how you get there is up to you, is up to you based on stylistic, yes. you know, you want to feel like you're still... That's where the internalization comes Yeah, in. yeah. yeah I understand. That's the ideal for me, mm-hmm. you know, learning a lot of modal music is mm-hmm. um, learning how to improvise yeah. and keep that identity really strong and search for some essence of those modes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, well, thank you so much for you know your attention and just Curiosity. listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I Can I ask one last question? It's <laughs> 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 always that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> wants to go home and have a beer, but yeah. Yeah. I don't want to test Maybe your patience. Go, <laughs> it's just the very last one. Um, you just used you the term. Last one. Yeah, my <laughs> last one. <laughs> Um, you just used the term mashup, which I think is really interesting because obviously that's what you you guys do because you talked about Turkish music uh, from music from province from um, Persia, uh, Java, and, and such. But um, in your studies, do you have the feeling that because that's our idea, I think, as Westerners, um, do you have the feeling that all the music that you study and all the cultures that you study are really that pure? Um, how we think they are, because you just said something interesting that Sufism was brought by a, a Chinese guy to, um, to Java. Java. That's a I, that's the first time I heard about, it. and it's like wow, that's really interesting. So how pure is the stuff that you study, um, the history that you that you learn? I'm just so inspired. Can I say something just real fast? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, I was thinking the, the, the pure the pureness <laughs> is not in the our cultural concepts or, you know, those definitions, the political reality, but the pureness is in the philosophy uh, that these, all these different cultures, every culture has wisdom traditions, and there is some pure thing in that. So I feel like if we can connect to that, or at least aim for that, and hope that we can transmit or be, you know, receivers or whatever, I, I really believe in that possibility, and that that's um, more important to me than the political analysis, even though that's a great subject that could go on for the next 10 years. <laughs> sure. But it does transcend that, the political the political reality or historical reality. That's what, what I think that's what you just said, right? Well, I wouldn't want to say to people who do political work, like, oh. this work is better or more important, no, 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 yeah. because it's great yeah. when people want to argue or debate about appropriation and things like this, I, I get really upset too. But, you know, I don't want to be upset in the music, you know, um, when I'm trying to, like, find that experience of oneness and of, like, a deep love that I want to share with other people. Um, but I don't think they're mutually exclusive, but I just um, personally can't approach them in the same way at the same moment. But what were you going to say, Ava? I'm curious. Uh, just to give a quick answer, it's not really possible, but I was just going to bring up some different terms besides pure, pure is a dangerous word, especially when combined with like ethnic 
ethnic uh, subject matter of ethnicity. Th that's what I meant because that's a, a concept that a lot of people have th yeah. that there's some something like purity, and I don't think there is. Well, a lot on of the other hand, so I will put it down to. Uh, I like to think of the terms um, memory and tr and uh, imagination on a psychological level. Tradition and um, no receiving, receiving and giving, basically. So uh, all the traditions that we know about, there's a reason we don't just know about it because of our, of our privilege or anybody's privilege. That was given by people in the past. So sometimes I think all that work, it doesn't matter where in the world it came from all the work that they did, they did for, actually, they did it for us, approximately, our generation. So, to humbly receive that, and, yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't have, a lot of music has gone extinct, and a lot of languages no longer around. Not because they weren't pure, but, uh, Something. Or they were too pure, or anything. Something, yeah. And some tragedies happen, and some mistakes happen in, in, in history. So anything that we can know about. Uh, but it's always a construction project, so they're always adding their imagination to it. And I think it's important that we do that. Because imagination <laughs> is like kind of like energy. Then it, it helps, too. And it's not only survival, too. Some music like a person has to die sometimes.